How's it going everyone? My name is Case and behind the camera... Yep, it's Tommy. And today we are bringing you possibly the final update on Project Gunsmoke while it still belongs to us. Because right now on barnfinds.com, this truck is for sale. The auction is live and you can bid on it and you should do because all of the proceeds from this go towards a good cause. We're auctioning it for Mountain State's children's home and barnfinds.com was nice enough to even waive the buyer's premium so all of the funds from the sale of this truck really will go to the children's home. Basically the way that it's going to work is when the auction is over we will be put in contact with the buyer and then once we have received the wire transfer we'll send the title and the buyer can arrange for the shipping and if you guys need some help figuring out exactly who to ship with we can definitely point you in the right direction. But in terms of the truck itself, here's a little bit of backstory. So one of our viewers named David Morrow donated this truck to us because he bought it just to pull the camper that was in the bed out of it and restore that, which he has done and since he's made a really cool overlander out of it. The truck itself, he thought, well, I could sell it and make a couple bucks, but what I would rather do is donate the truck to TFL so that we could go through the truck, make it better, and auction it for that particular charity of his choice. And since we got the truck, David has helped us fix all of the rust in it, we swapped another bed onto it, we repainted the truck farm style, and did a lot of other minor things. We did a headlight restoration, new mirrors, we got some cool old school super duty badges that we threw on the truck. There's new shocks, the brakes got fixed. And here's one of the really cool bits. David built these rock sliders right here out of basically scrap metal that he had in his yard and they look incredible. So those are truly one of a kind. On top of that, Toyo tires, they even gave us this set of 35 inch open country AT3s. And these tires are awesome. If you haven't seen the video of us off-roading this truck, you should because this thing just killed it. We basically couldn't get this truck to slip a tire because it just has so much clearance, articulation, grip. The thing is pretty awesome. Although I will say to be fair, there's imperfections. I mean, you can see we basically painted this truck in a total of two days. So it's far from show quality, it's got texture to it, there's still dents under the surface, but it looks a hell of a lot better than it did. So the, uh, uh, Case, I almost called you David. Uh, <laughs> what a compliment, right? Yeah. So when we bought this truck, it had huge amounts of rust over the rear fenders. It also had quite a bit of rust in the cab corners. So basically we bought a donor truck to uh, replace the bed with. It was a 1990 F-150, and the bed just swapped on perfectly to the 89 F-350. That's not a leak, I don't think. I think we got a lot of snow, and it's just melting water, so uh, before you start commenting. But it's uh, like like Kay said, it's, you know, it's far from perfect, but it's a very presentable truck. Yeah, it's good. It works on the road. I mean, it's not the smoothest thing in the world, especially because it's a heavy-duty truck. And before we got the truck, the person who owned it originally... It looks like they did some suspension modifications to be able to handle that camper that was sitting in the back. So it definitely rides pretty hard. It's an old school heavy duty truck. It's always going to be like that. But look underneath, right? Like, it really is in nice condition under there. Uh, so many of these trucks have just tons and tons of rust. And this one had really bad rust up here on the left front fender. But we sourced a uh, donor F, uh, F250 fender for it from a... Uh, U pole here in Denver. So like it was a great learning experience for us, but it, it also is a very solid rig. So you know it's not gonna win any shows, but it's uh it's really well sorted now. So I would feel you know comfortable driving this around and not feeling like I'd get stranded. Absolutely. It's got a big Dana front axle, a big sterling rear axle, four-wheel drive, five-speed manual, bulletproof 7.3 liter IDI international source diesel engine. And you know, we've gotten a lot of comments of people saying well, the, the way that this truck got its nickname Gunsmoke is from all the smoke that comes out of the exhaust. But honestly, that smoke clears up once this truck is up to temperature, which tells me it's probably not blow-by. This truck, I don't think it needs an engine rebuild. I think it just needs some fresh injectors. And on top of that, it could also benefit 
from an alignment, the AC doesn't work. So there's still things for whoever buys this truck, it's a project vehicle and it could definitely use even more attention. But as it sits, it's a good machine, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it is a good machine. I mean, uh, we've been driving it around here in Boulder uh, for a while now and really no issues in terms of drivability. Do you want to pop the hood and we can show them the engine? Mm -hmm. It's a non-turbo diesel, so it's not exactly quick, but it's such a cool driving experience because it's the same speed from zero to 10 as it is from 40 to 50 as it is from 60 to 70. It will not be rushed, but it will, uh, it will get you eventually, get you there eventually. Case, it's in the grill, isn't it? I think I'd know that by now. Yeah, hey, we've only popped it a thousand times. Oh my god. What's <laughs> going on here? Okay, well, well, Case figures out the hood lash. There you go. It's just heavy. It's just <laughs> heavy, yeah. So here it is. Um, mileage is unknown. The odometer reads 50,000 miles, but who knows what the true mileage is. But it's a really cool piece of history. International sourced engine. I want to say torque is pretty pretty substantial. I don't know the exact torque rating, but it's, it's about 365 if I remember right. I mean, it's a big block, right? It also has dual yeah. batteries, so dual batteries on the left and the right. And it has no problem moving these 35 inch tires. You really don't need to rear gear it. It's, it's happy with them. And the best part, like Kay said, is it's super over axled. So I think it's a Dana 60 in the front. I think it's a Dana 60 in the front and a Sterling 10.25 in the back. I can't remember, honestly. Basically a bulldozer axle is what we're talking about. And then, um, in, in case you're wondering too, we also uh, had the uh, truck bed line. You want to tell them about that? Yeah, so our friends up at NOCO Linex, they actually provided us with this bed liner for free because they also saw the value in getting this truck to a condition that would fetch as much money as possible for the children's home because it is a good cause, so they were happy to participate, and we have to give them, Toyo, everyone who's participated in this project, especially David, huge thanks for doing so. Another great thing about this particular truck is that in terms of the interior, it's actually pretty nice. Yeah, five-speed manual too. Yeah, you gotta love that, and the fact that it's a single cab. These old school single cab trucks are just so good looking, and I love this. Very simple, very boxy, but very masculine body style. I think that's part of the reason that people like this truck. It even has its original radio in it, which believe it or not, works brilliantly. Uh, yeah, it works really well. Da Dash has, I think, really no cracks in it whatsoever. It has a CB. I'm not sure the CB works. I've I never tried it. I don't think the it. CB works. <laughs> But yeah, in terms of the rest of the interior, really the only major imperfection that jumps out at me is that little handle over there. There's like cracks in that, but uh, other than that, it's actually in surprisingly nice shape. Yeah, it really is. And um, I can show you kind of the, the exhaust here. So it has a, a pretty much a true dual exhaust setup, right? I think it goes all the way to the header or pretty much. Yeah. It also has dual tanks. Uh, David repainted the bumper. And Case, why don't you grab that paperwork from the inside? We'll show you how much uh, this restoration cost us because it's kind of an interesting thing. Now, it's worth noting, of course, we are selling it with a clear Colorado title. And if you're wondering, uh, in order to get plates for it, we did have to go through emissions and it passed emissions. You, you took it emissions testing, right? Yeah, it had no problem at all. So uh, on that paper uh, case, I kind of went through and listed how much it costs to fix a truck up. So you can see the truck was donated to us. Brake work and drive belts were 566. There's the F-150 donor truck that was 900. Um, kind of some odds and ends, smaller fees. Uh, wheels were 420. Um, oh, I totally forgot to add the paint on there. The paint itself was $447. Um, so we spent about $3,200 in total. And then, of course, we were donated the bed lining tires and sliders. So all in all, if you wanted to do this by yourself, it would probably cost you about five grand. Um, and then you'd need a David. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because David and his labor, especially building things like those rock sliders, those are the kinds of things that would cost a lot of money to have done at a shop, which is why it's great to have a handyman like David on your side. And yeah, I'd, I'd have to say we've gotten this thing to a point that I'm pretty happy with because initially when we had the truck, it was a little embarrassing to drive. It, it, didn't, it didn't look good. It didn't sound good. It, it didn't ride well. It, it, it needed work. And the point that we've gotten it to now makes it a fun, presentable truck that works surprisingly well off-road. And it works well enough on-road. I wouldn't want to take it probably, you know, 
across country and back because it is, you know, it's loud, it's bumpy, it's an old truck. But it's a great machine and I don't see this thing cutting out anytime soon. I think it's a pretty solid vehicle. Case is living large in his uh, 94 Dodge. I would take this across country. I think it would be fun. Can you close the hood up and we'll close this video up? So there you have it. Four wheel drive works, four high, four low. Uh, transfer case is good. Transmission shifts really well through all five speeds and reverse. Um, you, you know, like we're not professional body, body people. So there are definitely a few dents we missed uh, and uh, definitely some oil orange peel, excuse me. Uh, but you know, it's a really presentable looking truck. I think someone with some paint experience could really shine this up and make it look super cool. Yeah, if you hit it with a wet sand and buff, it'd get rid of all that, that orange peel. But you know, I think there's not that much that this truck desperately needs. It's, it's a pretty good machine as it sits. Yeah, so check out Barn Finds. And the link is in the description below. I'll also pin a comment. Um, and like we said, 100% of proceeds are going to a charity here in Colorado. So the more the better for this truck uh, because it's been a labor of love and it's going to a good cause. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much all we have for you in this video. So we'll make sure to check back in with you guys as soon as this truck is sold so you can see how everything shook out. Thanks, everyone, for watching. As always, this is Case. Yep, and Tommy, check out tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest in new and used truck reviews. Oh, man, this Forerunner ruining <laughs> my clothes. But let us know in the comment section below what would you like to see the next project truck to be uh, because David is itching to get going on another one. Absolutely, and if you want to donate a truck, we wouldn't be opposed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you guys. Bye.